Hey guys, welcome back to lesson three. In today's video, we are going to start off with a scenario, a future scenario. So let's say that it's a year from now and you've been up and running, your store has been up and running for almost a year. Everything has been going great this year. You've continued to see growth every single month and you've brought in almost $100,000 in sales in your first year. That is so exciting and you are just thrilled to continue to set goals for yourself and to continue to grow. You have so many ideas and you are excited for what's to come. Right? Wrong. Because everything is about to fall apart. Why? Because you are being sued. And you are being sued by Disney. Why? Because you sold an item that had one of their characters on it that you did not have permission to use. They are suing you for copyright infringement. Now, since you set yourself up as a sole proprietor, all of your personal assets are liable. So all of your personal savings, your house, your husband's 401k retirement fund, it's all liable because you chose to set yourself up as a sole proprietor and not as an LLC. Now, if you think that this is unlikely, I will link in the description bar a link to an article that showed that Disney actually sued a company for creating a logo that looked too similar to their logo with the Mickey Mouse ears. It happens to small business owners. Now, another example could be, let's say you've decided to sell designer-inspired or counterfeit face mask. So you're using face masks that have Gucci's logo, Louis Vuitton, etc. You are selling those face masks. And now, all of a sudden, you're being raided and you're being charged for selling counterfeit goods. That's something that you want to avoid. Now I know that also seems unlikely because so many people are doing things like that and they get away with it, but all it takes is one scenario, one time, to risk it all and to lose everything. Another example is from the store Fashion Nova. So they actually had to pay over $9 million in refunds to settle FTC charges it violated on shipping and returns. Basically, they promised fast free shipping and then failed to meet its shipping promises to the consumers. And it also failed to meet the mail orders rule requirement that consumers be notified of shipping delays and given the chance to cancel orders and receive prompt refunds. Also, Fashion Nova at times failed to refund consumers for the items that it did not ship. Instead, it was the company's policy to issue gift cards, which are not considered refunds under the mail order rule. The company also failed to cancel orders and provide refunds when it did not offer consumers delay option notices. Now these are things that you want to avoid for your store. So that brings me to our topic for today. And that is going to be all about how to set yourself up and your store up for success legally. You want to make sure that everything you do is by the books and that you have taken all the precautions and registered for all of the things you need to in order to legally sell products online. So now let's take some time to talk about all the things you can do for your store to set it up legally. Today we're going to take a look at these four topics. We will make sure that you have everything you need to successfully and legally operate your business. I also want to give a quick preview of what's to come in our next video lesson. With that, let's dive into it. Now the first thing that we need to do is to register your business. Now an LLC can't prevent you from breaking the law or getting in trouble. But what it can do is protect your personal assets. A sole proprietorship offers a low cost option and simplicity. 
An LLC offers flexibility regarding how you pay taxes and protection for the LLC owner. Understanding the differences can help inform the decision that will be right for your business. So let's take a look. As a sole proprietor, you will be taxed as a self-employed person. LLCs can actually be taxed as a sole proprietor if you are a one-person LLC or as a corporation or partnership. To register your LLC, you will need to pay the registration fee and then also pay the annual registration fee every single year. Your business name must include LLC or Limited Liability Corporation in it, but you can then choose to register a doing business as if you want to use a different name than your LLC. For the sole proprietor, you do not have any name requirements. The major downside to the sole proprietorship is that as the owner, you are not protected against lawsuits filed against your business and you will be responsible for any business debt and creditors can come after your personal assets. Choosing an LLC would protect the owner. One thing that is similar for both is that if you are a one person LLC, you will be required to report your income and expenses. Your net income will be taxable regardless of which option you select. Once again, you face a significant risk if you choose the cheaper option to register as a sole proprietor. At any point, if you are sued, all of your personal belongings will be at risk. If you do open a brick and mortar and someone slips and falls, your personal finances will be at risk. On the other side of that, if you're married and your spouse goes bankrupt, your business expenses will then be at risk as well. With an LLC, your business and personal assets remain separate, and if something goes wrong with one, the other will not be affected. So in conclusion, although the sole proprietorship is the cheaper option, the LLC will benefit you in the long run by protecting you and your assets. For more information, trying to decide which one to choose, contact your accountant. Now, let's take a look at how to register your LLC. If you have chosen to form an LLC, you have made a great decision. An LLC offers flexibility when you pay taxes and it protects the LLC owner. The process of registering your LLC will differ by state. But what I've done is linked in the description bar a link to a blog post that details all of the filing fees and annual registration fees by each state. Now, although the process varies by state, I will list out the basic steps you need to take to form your LLC. First, you will need to choose the name for your LLC. You will likely need to put LLC in the name so for example, if you are the Ladybug Lifestyle Boutique, you will need to make it Ladybug Lifestyle Boutique LLC. If you decide that you do not want others to see LLC in your business name, you can register a DBA, which is a doing business as, where you can use your business name. You could register the store as Ladybug Lifestyle Boutique LLC, and then register the DBA as Ladybug Life Clothing Store. Just make sure that your name has not already been used in your state. Once you've decided on a name, you'll need to file the paperwork. This can be done online for most states, but I will link to information on each in the description bar. Lastly, we'll need to register additional licenses for your store. Since we are selling clothing online, you'll be required to obtain a seller's permit or resale license. So let's take a look at the other things you'll need to obtain. The first is the EIN number, which will be your business tax ID number. It is basically like a social security number for your business. Fortunately, registering for an EIN number will be free of cost. Next, we have the seller's permit, which is also known as the resale permit, resell permit, reseller number, etc. Obtaining this allows you to legally sell products or services in your state and collect sales tax. Wholesale vendors will require you to provide this when you register your account. One note, be wary of any wholesale vendor who does not require this. Depending on the state you live in, you may be required to collect and pay this tax. 
Do not wait until the last minute to understand the requirements for your state. Some states will charge hefty late fees if you do not pay on time. You may want to hire an accountant to help you understand the requirements of your local area. Once you've obtained your legal requirements, make sure you keep the documentation in a secure location and then have them handy when you register for wholesale vendors. Now that we've gone over the legal requirements, I want you guys to leave with a few key takeaways. Number one is that I highly recommend you register as an LLC to protect yourself and your personal finances. Number two is to avoid being shady and practicing shady business processes. It doesn't take long for shortcuts and ignorance to catch up to you. Make sure you are on top of the rules in your area and make wise decisions in your business practices. A few suggestions. Source quality products that you will be proud to sell. Cheap quality items will not get you far for long. Always do what you say you're going to do, especially if you say you're going to do something for a customer. This means if you offer fast free shipping, you better make sure you ship those products fast or at least send an update if there is a delay. A quick status update can go a long way. Imagine that you are the customer shopping at someone else's store. If you would be offended or upset by something the owner said or did, you best believe that your customers will too. Just treat your customers as you'd want to be treated as a customer. Always make sure that you keep track of important records and document anything that you think could come back to bite you in the future. The more you have available, the better off you will be when something comes up. Now I hope you all enjoyed the content for today's video series. A quick reminder, I do have linked below all of the blog posts and articles that we referenced today. So if you want to check out how much it costs to register your LLC in your state, that information is linked below. I also want to provide a quick friendly reminder that if you're still struggling to make decisions about how to open your business, feel free to consult your accountant and they can help you make the decision that's right for your business. Now with that, I hope to see you in our next video series. If you missed out on lesson one or two, I will link them down below. And I cannot wait for you to open your business and sell things.